Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today, I would like to show you how to create this twisting pattern on a signal ring and with the bezel set on the top. Are you ready? Let's get started. To starting this ring, we will need to create the, uh, the signal ring first and after that we'll create a pattern and we'll boolean difference out from there. So that's starting from the scratch. I'm going to come in into the front view and decided the ring size. So basically using a circle command and I want snapping into the zero. The radius I'm setting here for eight for this demonstration and I'm gonna come in uh, make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna draw the bottom of the ring shank. Let me go ahead to use the arc and we are going to draw something look like this. All right, on the bottom of the ring shank, I do want them to get a little bit thinner. So I'm going to pick up all these three control points and just moving up. Now let's go ahead to using another command uh, for the line and then from the midpoint. And from here, I want to going up for whatever, how tall you wanted this piece. And I'm gonna draw something roughly about this size. All right, with this size, I need to have this curve or this arc connected to this point. So we are going to use the command for extend the curve. And we want to extend it by the arc to the point, which means it's going to starting from this arc, snapping into this point. And again, from this arc and uh, snapping into this point. All right, so now we have something like that. I do like to have my top is not completely flat. Uh, I do want them to be a little bit curved. So instead of using this one, I'm going to delete it. And that was just a reference. Then I want to use this uh, arc tool one more time to do something a little bit rounded right there. Okay, now coming into the top, I'm going to draw the top view and see what this uh, look like. That's using the rectangle and you have a conic corners and we wanted to do three points. So this is the first point. This is the second point and coming up the third point for whatever that you like, right? So then we get this pillow shape. Let me use the align tool to align horizontal and back to the zero, right? So this is the shape that we are going to dealing with. Now you can make it bigger or smaller, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to actually make it a little bit wider. To creating the surface, I will need to have a uh, two rail here. So with this one, I'm going to use the split command and going to slip, split in the middle or at the quadrant and then we'll have two curve right now as a rail. So let's go ahead to building um, by using the sweep to rail. You got rail one, rail two, cross section, and you're going to end up the form like this. All right. And if that look okay to you, just click enter. Now, if I'm using the cap command on this one, I may just have a flat surface, but I do want it to have a puffy surface on the top. So here's what I wanted to do. Coming into the front view, I'm going to use the split command and we want to split with the point and exactly right in the midpoint. All right. So now we have this half curve over here. The command we are going to use is under the surface that you have have a rail revolve. Uh, with the rail revolve, you have this is as your profile and this is as your rail. And then you wanted to using this as an axis. So coming into the front view and we can click something here. So then we will have a cap. All right. If you go ahead to join this, uh, you're going to see in the render that you have a sharp corner. Right. So it doesn't look too good. Um, you could do is having this curve and it's getting a little bit rounder um, before you doing anything. But I also want to show you other way to make it a little bit rounder. First, we can try is using the fit edges. Now, when you are using the fit edges and I'm going to try something, one will be fine. And we're going to pick up these edges and click something like that. Now in the render view, it might look okay, but I do not like to have a certain area, for example, like this area right there. And it's kind of a little bit wavy. I do like to see them as completely straight line. So what I like to do 
is actually instead of using fitted edges, I do want to just cut it out the area that I want. For example, somewhere right there in the middle, I'm going to use the trim command and to trim it off entire area like this one. So once you trim it off, you can see there's a big gap, but the gap has an equal distance in between. All right, so what we like to do is I'm going to use the blend tool on blend surface and we want to blend in between here and here and then you will get this really nice puffy surface there. Okay, so if that were for you, let's click on this one, this one, and this one, and go ahead to join them together. Now, if you take a look on the render view, always double check on the render view and see if that were for you. Okay, it looks nice and smooth. I do not see any of the kink there, and I do not want to cut out the middle of the ring shank yet. Let's switch to another layer, and we want to do the pattern. The pattern can be something really simple, so I simply just go into creating a box. It's going to snap in in the middle and for something that's pretty big and with a, about one millimeter distance and I want something look like this. All right, I would like to move in this one back to the center. So I'm going to use a horizontal center and just type it zero right here. Okay, double make sure that it's the right size for our ring. It's covered entire ring. So I'm just going to move in this one down. All right, now you can see, say, Peter, you say entire white is half is because I'm going to do the polar array. So let me show you. With this one, we want to do polar array and we want a polar array for whatever number that you think will work. I'm going to have the center as a zero and for maybe uh, 16 pieces and let's see how it goes. All right, if you feel like this is too big of a gap, maybe you want to have a 24 pieces and you will get something like this. This. All right, so double make sure this is the good thickness that you want. Now, how are we going to create in the pattern? I'm going to select everybody. Transform tool, we have this one's called twist. It's going to snapping into the zero. It's going to pick up all the object right here for twisting and twisting axis. It's going to be on the bottom of this midpoint right there. So I'm going to look at the bottom and find out where's the midpoint coming into the top because the whole things wanted to be twist. I want to select where right in the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna coming into the top view. I only want to rotate them or like not rotate it. Uh, twist them for 180 degree, and then so I will get something like this. Now, if you see this is the pattern that you want, that's great. If not, we can continue to change it. All right, now let's go ahead to turn on what we had there and I'm going to change color to the red color so it's easier for you to see. You can see I kind of have a something over there and that's within the cover entire with the pattern. Right. So we wanted to use is using the bowling split. All right. All of this guy will be split by this poly surface right there. All right. Okay, now you get you see the shape is getting a little bit more complicated and we can go ahead to delete anything that we don't want it, right? Just maintain whatever that inside there. If I hide the original one, this is the pattern we're going to have. If I cut out the ring from the middle, it's going to be really weak. So first things I wanted to do is actually creating another ring for the inside. So this is the ring size that we have. I'm going to offset this guy for whatever thickness that you want. So I'm going to use the offset and we want to offset about one millimeter and it will be something like this. Okay, this will be the inner ring. I'm going to extrude it, make it longer by coming to the solid extruded planar curve straight on both sides. All right, this piece, it's going to be split by this piece. All right, so once this is split, we don't need this piece, we don't need this piece. All we have is this piece. I'm going to turn it into the green color. All right, now let's go back to turn on what we have and hiding this green temporary. We are going to turn on what we have on this pattern. And again, I want to pick up the ring size and extrude it into the solid. So we are going to extrude the planar curve straight with this one. And then I'm going to pick up everybody using the Boolean difference. 
all of this will be different out from here. All right, beautiful. As you can see, we have some structure. Uh, it's like really weakly connected to the top and the bottom of the ring shank. So we just going to turn it on the one that we were hiding earlier about about that green piece and I'm also going to hide in this one back. So the green piece is actually holding everything in place. Let's go ahead to take a look on the render view, right? So that will be a really decent ring there. You can set a stone right in the middle and I have a lot of other video talking about the bezel settings. So if you take a look on the render view, this will be your ring with the really clean inside of the ring shank with the bezel setting on the top. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and share and comment on my video. That will help me on my ranking so I can create more video for all of you. More of my trick and tips on Rhino 3D model for jewelry design is on my membership program. So think about joining the membership and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.